Ladies and gentlemen, I think we can all agree it's a good thing that the Vietnam draft ended because I can't imagine the torment of having to serve with someone like Soviet Womble and the boys from CF. But we can still get a look at what it might have been like thanks to random Rising Storm BS to part two from Soviet Womble. Let's do it. All of our chats then, just about to join some Rising Storm, we'll read out the server details and then you're welcome to join us. But no shooting me, uh, that's against the rules, shoot Neville. There, there actually are rules Quebec. Uh, about who you can and can't shoot in war, and boy howdy, you're not supposed to shoot civilians, you're not supposed to shoot medics, uh, you're not supposed to shoot, and this is all according to the Geneva Convention, The you're not supposed to shoot at ambulances or medical evacuation helicopters, and they actually don't carry weapons for exactly that reason. And most states are supposed to respect this, though uh, states with poorly disciplined militaries like Russia, there's no real guarantees that they're going to care about not hitting medics or air ambulances or regular ambulances. And of course, non-state actors like um, insurgent forces, they're obviously haven't signed the Geneva Convention and they definitely don't have the discipline uh, or the, the or care enough to engage with it right the geneva convention also says you can't target civilians well we know they do that Quebec's in the chat quebec come and be a commander go drop napalm on on enemy on civilians i mean enemy combatants what's the difference no, seriously what's the difference i don't know what the difference is in <laughs> vietnam tell me what the difference is <laughs> so this is actually sort of a joke right i think he may be making a joke uh about you know u.s forces being pretty indiscriminate in vietnam which is definitely true but this is the core he has actually summed up the core problem with counterinsurgency and that is that the enemy will put down their arms and be a civilian uh they will wear civilian clothes and uniforms or lack of uniforms right they will often have regular jobs in the case of the taliban it most of their fighters the largest portion of their fighting force were actually farmers who after planting but before the harvest would go off and fight or after the harvest but before the next season of planting they would go off and fight to earn extra money right and then go back in time for planting and you would could literally see in the data where during planting season violence hit a lull and then after the harvest violence would go rise and spike again that's exactly aligned with this farmer fighter and in vietnam it was very similar right you had a core cadre of full-time fighters in the form of the north vietnamese army uh, but you also had a large cadre of uh, Viet Cong guerrillas who provided various levels of support. Sometimes in some parts of the war, it was more logistic and intelligence support. And in some parts of the war, it was more like actual combatant support. To acquire this point. I've got to stay here because I'm like the leader leading. Yeah, yeah. I'm the leader. Lead from, lead from the right. I'm, I'm, le I'm, I'm directing the battle. Get in there. The Chinese. So you don't get to be a machine gunner and also a commander. Those are two different jobs. And being a machine gunner is actually kind of hard. And you want to make sure you have an experienced machine gun team. So you'll have someone next to you who's doing the ammunition, who's going to make sure you're managing your ammunition, manage your rate of fire, do your communication. Um, and then you yourself will be focused on your sector of fire. Man cooking on the floor. The Chinese man cooking on the floor. The Vietnamese. Yes. Oh, Vietnamese, sorry, my bad. <laughs> We're in Vietnam, you wallet. <laughs> Here's what's interesting. Okay. There is a large Chinese minority, ethnically Chinese minority, in Vietnam. I want to say the Han? No. Hmong, maybe? There's a large Chinese minority in Vietnam. And actually, they've, if I remember correctly, faced some significant discrimination. Um, but they are... Uh, I want to say culturally and even uh, linguistically Chinese, and so it would—it's not totally inaccurate to say, "Oh, there's a Chinese person cooking in Vietnam." South Koreans. Yeah, I love the retarded Chinese. There were also in Vietnam South Korean fighters, guys. I just have a lot of context, so buckle up. Yeah, the South Koreans. Um, 
South Korean military, right, was a, it, it continues to be, but especially then was a staunch ally of the United States. Obviously, the United States had intervened just a few years earlier to preserve the South Korean government. So when the U.S. needed assistance in Vietnam, North or South Korea was happy to send their armed forces. This is Vietnamese, not Chinese. It, it is literally called Rising Storm Vietnam. So you are playing as the Koreans. Koreans? I hate Chinese. Vietnamese. <laughs> North Korea against South Korea? Happy to be some Korean barbecue. Are we now playing on this map as, yeah. as Japanese? Oh, the, not the, the Japanese were not involved in this war. And I think that's actually mostly because of the Japanese constitution that was implemented after 1945, which said that the uh state of japan could no longer use war as a means of diplomacy or war as a means of achieving objectives which meant they were prohibited from having a military now in the modern era right as a necessity japan has a self-defense forces the jsdf and they are literally called the japanese self-defense forces and as a general rule they do not perform any armed operations overseas outside of defending the territory of japan which because of some chinese claims on nearby islands i think they're called the spratleys um is actually a real issue there is real concern about the integrity <coughs> of japan and japanese islands uh so the jsdf definitely still has their work cut out for them they have a reputation as being a highly professional force uh but it is worth noting they do no overseas operations uh armed i think they've sent a few hundred people to do things like provide medical aid after disasters and the like but that's about it <laughs> making my way downtown with a giant machine gun trying to find that jab why is it no one in this clan knows which war we're fighting There's a lot of asians in germany i didn't know Stop. <laughs> okay that's that's pretty funny Hi, uh, what non-racist terms did the americans call the vc <laughs> so the charlie vc chinese no not chinese stop with the they are they could be i actually believe the ethnic chinese uh were uh well known as being um allies of the united states but let me let me actually take a look at this right i don't have anything better to do i'm gonna give you guys real facts right minority in vietnam chinese minority in vietnam is the uh hoa h-o-a so hoa in vietnam war all right the hoa in the vietnam war there's bien hoa and hoa uh hoa i think they were militia sorry we're gonna yes okay the hoa hoa uh religious movement sect of buddhism ba -ba 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 -ba. world war ii and your china uh fall of saigon okay yeah so the group's were they these guys were strong allies of the um u.s forces um right uh, prowess and counter guerrilla high level of security in provinces where it operated uh the highest security rating of any province in south vietnam despite being surrounded by areas near the bottom of the list and this is actually illustrative of the fact one the u.s provided massive support right before the fall of saigon two hoa hoa regional force battalions uh, and hundreds of thousands of Hoa Hoa served in the, uh, sorry, I apologize. I'm completely uh, anglicizing this and it's, my pronunciation is not correct at all. Uh, served in ARVN units, uh, and thousands more trained soldiers. So it, it's a fascinating case study in the fact that, um, one, the Chinese in, you could almost have the pro-American force be Chinese, uh, and What's even more interesting is that it shows just how much guerrilla forces depend on insular cultural integration. And what I mean by that is this idea, right? The Taliban in Afghanistan, right? They're Pashtun. Uh, and so they have their greatest level of support in Pashtun regions, right? Because they understand the culture, they understand the norms, they understand the language, and they understand the concerns that people face day to day. So even if you are trying your best to be a, a helpful and a good faith negotiator, the linguistic and cultural barrier is so vast that it is impossible or almost impossible for a guerrilla force to gain a foothold in those regions.
That's why some of the U.S.'s most successful operations in Afghanistan were actually negotiated settlements in which they would get a population, uh, for example, in my region, the Shinwari tribe, uh, to just agree, to just say, listen, we will pay you, we will build a bunch of stuff in your in your district, but you got to boot out the Taliban. And the Shinwari go, oh, okay, sure, yeah, let me make a few phone calls. And that's it, right? That's a few phone calls from the Shinwari, uh, from a local tribe, uh, is, is vastly going to outweigh decades of counterinsurgency operations by a foreign power who doesn't speak the language and doesn't know the culture. The, fuck? the title of the game is Rising Storm Vietnam. <laughs> Stop calling them Chinese. And so that's why, obviously, if you have a strong ethnic Chinese uh, culture in certain regions, it's going to be almost impossible for an ethnically and linguistically Vietnamese uh, force to gain a foothold. Chinese. Get grenades from the gracious throwing one two zero to I need I nearly said Mexicans are coming. The Vietnamese are coming. <laughs> <laughs> are you are you alright? I'll be fine. I'm okay. <laughs> alright guys, I've got um, I've got um, fantastic markers. Fantastic squad leaders leaving leading markers leading where they are and it's four minutes till the night till the night. Quebec, don't use public channel. Uh, Oh, sorry, sorry, disregard that. <laughs> Have you just been telling the entire server yeah. what our plan is? He's been telling the fucking VC what we're doing this <laughs> whole been fucking do, I've been time. Doing that for the Can I hear you? No, oh, no. You can go and have yeah. weird sex after the stream. No, don't start now. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing more uncomfortable uh, in any world, gaming space or otherwise, than having your friend get hot and heavy with their significant other in front of you. It's weird, it's uncomfortable, and it's kind of a teenager move. Ow, don't you dare. <laughs> Stop it! So you're living together with your girlfriend now. Yes, and it's amazing. I give it a year. Yeah, Sorry, I mean congratulations. <laughs> yeah, listen, okay. It, yeah, I'm always skeptical when somebody's like, it's amazing. Like, when it runs a little too hot and cold, then you're like, okay. Like, if you can't acknowledge that, like, listen, moving in with anybody has some challenges. There's some things that are tough. And even if the good outweigh the bad, you got to acknowledge that there's got to be some conflict, right? Who 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 puts their uh, toothbrush where? How often do you clean this or that, right? These are the sort of things that you you just have. It's just a natural conflict when you have two people who are used to living independently start living together. <laughs> that's, uh, that's one way to enter the trench. Is that a grenade? That's a grenade. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Well, Miss Jane says, so we're cuddling in bed, referring to Quebec, and he turns around and says in his sexy voice, I had a banana today. What? Who is Miss Jane? Platoon leader cat with me. Yes. <laughs> He's cat with him. Platoon leader cat. Is your cat picking the artillery location? Yeah, that's it. She's a... Puts a paw on the screen. I mean, listen, there. Uh, I'm going to be honest. There are some cats that could do a better job. The classic mistake is that in a panic, as you're being shot at, the lieutenant doesn't call out the enemy's coordinates. He calls out his own. You have to remember to do that last piece of math. You figure out exactly where you are, and then you have to figure out the distance and direction of the enemy, and then feed them their point right if you really are in a panic which don't get me wrong i hate plotting grid coordinates and i've several times had somebody be like there was one instance where i was called in as the quick reaction force someone had been hit with a vehicle born ied and they start reading me grid coordinates and i'm like stop stop stop, stop. listen this is my ao i know everywhere just give me a, a, an actual place they're like, oh, I'm on this route, 300 meters past the church. Okay, so, so or the mosque, there were no churches. Oh, okay, the mosque, you know, with the blue roof, they're like, yeah, okay, got it, I know exactly where you are. All right, we'll be to you in 15, right? Because otherwise, you give me an eight-digit grid, then I got to plot it, and then all this to just be like, you know, it's like your neighborhood, right? You're not going to sit there and be like, where are you? I'm at 307 Elm Way. You're like, no, you're like... I'm at Mike's house, or we're at the playground. Oh, the playground? The one by the highway? Yeah, that's the one. Oh, gotcha. Right, so the, the moral of this story is, one, clear communication is more important than getting things, you know, than the, like, doctrinally correct communication. And so that's why I would trust a cat over a panicked lieutenant. Green says there, and then, like, 25 Americans die. <laughs> Tommy, go get on the front line. 
Go get on the front line, Tommy. Front line, Tommy. Go ahead. You ordering your cat to attack? Gush. You weren't there, man. He says you weren't there. What the fuck, <laughs> Dinkle, what the fuck are you dressed as? Uh, John Lennon. I want to see Aussie John Lennon. <laughs> Stop it, you two. It's no, that is really annoying. Nauseating. <laughs> I'll come down to you. Imagine the Ozzy John Lennon. Damn, he is really channeling some Ozzy John Lennon. But there were Aussies in Nam. Right? The Australians provided a lot of troop support to Vietnam. And it is interesting. These guys look uh, even more... Well, frankly, I'm sure there were troops in Vietnam who had uh, American troops who had this exact look, right? You get 19 year olds, you have this mega celeb. The 19 year olds are going to want to channel their favorite mega celeb. And in this case, it's John Lennon. Is no heaven. Oh, yeah. Easy if you try. Hello. Oh, God. They call me Bruce Big Chest. You're like a <laughs> I love that mustache. I'm just, there's just no, no argument. That's just the mustache of a true Chad. A porn star. Aizen looks normal, just a normal white guy. <laughs> so here's the thing. I'm going to tell you. This guy getting some strong uh, new to Nam vibes. Right? This These other two dudes look like they've been in a while. John Lennon is like, fuck this, I'm a peacenik. This dude is like, fuck this, I wish I was doing more killing. And this dude, though, though sometimes it can be deceptive. Because let's be honest. Honestly real talk this dude may actually i may be lied this dude is the one with the most experience why is that because if you've been shirtless for six months you're going to be nothing but sunburn right you're just going to be the human sunburn especially if you're australian right so and and the big hat is just for show right because it's not if you cared about sun protection which is what this big brim really does for you you put on a fucking shirt also if you've ever worn load-bearing vests these things are not comfortable so you really want to have something between your skin and the shirt now i could totally see you rolling your sleeves cutting the sleeves off something anything right then you've got john lennon and right? let's let's see if we can back it up and, and and get them to look at old john lennon there you go see john lennon he's a little more common sense he has a uh, a cut off sleeveless shirt right but his he's got his weird glasses which is fine but then he's got like uh, the ammo all draped across his chest i kind of buy that but if you're patrolling in nam you don't want it to make that jingle jangle noise right you don't want to sound like a like a like a like a christmas ornament as you're patrolling right you want to be stealthy and also if you've been bit by if you've been in vietnam everyone Everyone says the mosquitoes were vicious. I have never read an account that doesn't talk about how brutal the bugs are. So logically, who's going to fare the best against the bugs? It's this dude. This dude has zero commitment to cool guy factor. He gives no fucks. He knows he's that this long sleeve shirt, long sleeve pants combo is far hotter. They're not going to be as cool, but he knows he's been eaten by alive by bugs. He's been sunburned to hell. He's done the cool guy thing. And now he's beyond giving a shit, right? He can't be bothered to have a well-trimmed mustache or even a cool haircut. He's just like, I don't give a shit. Buzz it off, right? This is the man that you should be afraid of. Even though he looks like the lamest of them all, he's the one who shows that it's like being a hipster, right? Where you're cool because you don't give a shit, but then when people try to look too much like a hipster, then it cycles back. It's the person who just does not look like they give a, an, a fuck. It's sort of like the billionaire in the t-shirt. Like I said, the, the to me, the rich man uniform. Like if you, everyone I've met with over a hundred million dollars worth of net worth, um, they have one look. And if they are chilling, it is an alumni t-shirt. That is it, a t-shirt from their alma mater. That's it, that's what they wear, right? That is their chill uniform. And then other than that, right, different people, some people do the tech thing at work, The but they all, they all just chill at home with an alumni t-shirt. So this is the equivalent of the man who like goes out to a bar in cufflinks and a fancy button up shirt. You know, he's like making, you know, okay money, but he's not the real Chad. This dude on the left is the guy in Air Jordans, right? Fancy Supreme everything. Wants you to think he's rich. And this unassuming dude who gets everything right, he's just, he's hes the true gazillionaire. What do you mean? I'm youthful. I'm youthful and sexy and virile, right? Yeah, look at that face. 
Look at those eyes. That's the eyes of someone who has seen all the shit. Look, look, he looks like he's 40. Do you know how hard you have to go to like make it to be 40 in Vietnam? This is just this is just a man. This is a true chat. This is like this is the face of death. This is the last thing dozens of Vietnamese have seen before they die. Sure. You know, you're only as young as you feel. Well, let's go. Oh, uh, yes, yeah. I haven't actually put a tunnel down for like ages. <laughs> Hang on, Ooh. I'll be right back. Oh, and then I get shot. Great tunnels position, Serbia. I thought they'd never expect it because it's so out in the open and undefended. No, would no idiot would dig a tunnel there. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, I'm here. <laughs> we are getting barraged. Motherfucker! Oh no, my finger slipped on the trigger. What you don't know is that I'm big on voodoo, so I'm going to go waggle his chicken outside and curse you for the next nine he, years. He's going to waggle his chicken, folks, against the Twitch Terms and Service. A masturbation reference. I'm just going to note that down. You're going to write that down. 467 masturbation. See, I get good points with the Twitch police if I report you, you see. I'm ah, the Twitch police. Yeah, if you haven't been aware, man, Twitch, Twitch has been banning people pretty arbitrarily. There's obviously, and YouTube is starting to do the same thing, where there's, if you're a big YouTuber and you're protected by corporate, you get to do a lot of things that regular YouTubers can't do. Um, there was recently a YouTuber who was banned uh, named Fillion. He was banned for promoting gambling on his stream. Well, the problem is Fillion exposes people who scam and exploit their viewers. And he used literal clips that are on YouTube of these mega YouTubers promoting gambling to their very young audience. And oftentimes it's gambling websites that aren't legal in the United States. They're oftentimes crypto casinos based out of the Caribbean or Africa. And it, in addition to being pretty illegal or legally a gray area, um, these guys are directing their fans to what are money-making, unlicensed, unregulated casinos. You may not know this, but in the United States, we have a body that regulates uh, games of chance. So when you spin a roulette wheel, it's actually inspected by the state to make sure that the odds of different the events are as depicted, right? So the roulette wheel isn't, for example, tilted or the uh, payout uh, like ridges uh are smaller than the loss ridges right Th that's all very carefully done um and every machine every uh dealer it's all inspected to ensure that the odds are they're never in your favor because obviously casinos don't make money but they are always inspected to sure the to ensure that the odds are as advertised Crypto casinos are operate with none of those. And yet these YouTubers promote them, but because they're big, because they're huge YouTubers, uh, they get protected in a way that literally even the people that expose them as uh, scamming their audience, they are the ones who get demonetized and copyright striked. It's super screwed up. And if you want, you can punch into Google. I may actually stick it in the description of this video because it, it, it Philly, Philly's like discussion of what happened to his channel is, is pretty wrong. I'm on police. with the Twitch police. Quebec bad influence on young people, you see. Oh, so that's it, yeah. you got to protect the children. Don't touch yourself, kids. <laughs> this is a Christian sermon. This is a Christian sermon. Did you say you were going to put a voodoo curse on me? Yes. Motherfucker, I actually know how voodoo works. I'm sorry, oh, voodoo you know works? <laughs> he knows how voodoo works. I took a class on it. Uh, <laughs> okay, right. That, that homeless guy that behind the bike shed does not count as a class, is that, okay? Is that up there with your homeopathy degree? <laughs> there was a class on like local folklore, like hauntings, voodoo. They took us to an actual voodoo church. Okay. They actually fucking taught us how the whole thing works. Okay. Still not explaining where the works comes from. Yes. See, you make a doll. Right. Right. And like, yeah. you use, get someone's like, uh, like a piece of someone, someone's hair. Okay. Like a piece. And you take it to that. Okay, I love Quebec. Uh, Quebec is a chipmunk who is uh, very prim and proper. And yeah, he's pointing this out. These 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 are interesting traditions, right? Uh, in Brazil, they had uh, ache or candomblé, which is uh, like the, the, yeah, their, their version of voodoo. There's santaria. There, there's a whole bunch that come from these traditions. And they're sort of blending of... Um, christian or catholic tradition and the indigenous religions uh this is pretty common in almost every culture right that has sort of 
one religion imposed on top of it right people find these weird ways of practicing sort of both both traditions simultaneously um the problem is that as they point out they don't really exist and sometimes i get bothered by like the number of like foo-foo courses that get offered um at universities and this this may be an example of one of them but like looking back i realized that like i took a lot of courses that like i paid a fair amount of money for and i'm not sure i got any smarter um like a field trip to a voodoo church like this i don't know does that make you a more well-rounded person uh sometimes i don't know house okay and then you stab them and you leave the doll on their corpse Oh right. Okay. Oh right. I can't so, with so you. It's, it's, it's like yeah, kind of, a, like a practical a application of yes, the voodoo. Absolutely. So you don't stab the doll. You stab no, the person. It, yeah. I like that. That's cutting out the middle. That works. Place. You should definitely definitely you market that. It's neo voodoo. Neo, neo voodoo. Neo voodoo. Yeah. <laughs> also known. Don't know digital vagrant is like maybe a bullet or something, and he's wearing a a, a potted plant on his head. It's murder. <laughs> <laughs> Clear back blast. Oh. Oh, Jesus Christ. He even did the right thing. He said Black Blast Area Clear. <laughs> the battle hasn't even started. Grenade in. All right, coming everyone. I was killed by crippling depression. <laughs> crippling depression is even more dangerous when armed with an AK. Yeah. Go, get inside. Oof, oof. If you thought your mental health struggles were bad, wait do you see them turn into a guerrilla movement. Mine, 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 mine. Watch out, there's a mine in the doorway. Where's the mine? It's right in the doorway. Oh. Really? Well, it's not there anymore. So, um, You're going to never in to play this game. Is that necessarily a good well, idea? Well, it's immersion, isn't it? You know, we'll be charging the enemy and he'll be screaming incoherent Vietnamese. I found a Vietnamese guy. Ah! <laughs> oh, no, wait, he's on our team. It's fine. Just push. This is the other thing, like we talked about, the ARVN, or the Army of the Republic of Vietnam, uh, was the armed force of South Vietnam. And just like in Afghanistan, it's actually super depressing um, to read the original documentation, uh, memos, internal reports, and the like from Vietnam, because they sound exactly like the US uh, in Afghanistan. And y if you want an uncomfortable experience as a general, read those memos and realize how badly you, you were repeating those mistakes. Of course, I only read them after I had left active duty and went to grad school. Um, but the idea that there weren't uh, that it was like americans versus vietnamese is inaccurate mostly it was a vietnamese civil war where the americans massively intervened but ultimately just like afghanistan the level of endemic corruption at the, in among the south vietnamese was so vast that for most vietnamese people they never really wanted or expected the South Vietnamese government to last, right? And why would you? You have to think, Vietnam is one of, at that time, was one of the poorest countries in the entire world. And so Americans spending billions of dollars in that country, right, to buy things, to equip and train troops, the opportunity for fraud was just so vast. I mean, you have to think that if Americans... If you scam somebody for $500 and they say, okay, we'll never work with you again, it's a pain, right? You're like, ah, oh, damn. Like, you, you're like, man, I made a mistake, right? Because you believe that you could have made more money by being honest. Well, if $500 is the equivalent of five years worth of wages, you're definitely going to get people running those scams, right? And if it happens at every level, then the then no one trusts the government that you're supporting as the americans oh never is that a good idea thank you Neville. <laughs> <laughs> don't run from the scene of the crime never <laughs> gone quiet you're right neville yeah I'm running. <laughs> he's in the zone he's home in vietnam i let the radio man over here neville stands on top of one of the towers and goes i can see my house from here so it's square brackets FR and then it's Kim Fuck. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> what? I'm sorry. Kim what? Fuck. So it's Kim and then P H U. <laughs> Kim Fook. Right. I'm British. We didn't invade the rest of the world to speak their language. Quebec, are you enjoying toasting tongues? <laughs> uh, just lots oh, screaming. What? What? No! No! That is bullshit! Oh. That, that is I mean, Soviet just cannot throw a grenade to save his life. It's actually pretty weird. Absolute bullshit. Ah, on the menu is dried fruit and GI, apparently. Do the trees scream if you burn them? Yeah, they scream in Vietnamese. Yeah. He died, you know? Who? 
Oh, wow. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Is. Oh, dude. Can you maybe not do that into the mic? No. Okay. That's why you have to have a limiter on your mic settings. It's important. It's easy. You can do it in OBS. It prevents exactly that. Fuck you, fucking plain fuck. Oh! No wow. way! No fucking way! <laughs> Sorry, ex Wow, that was pretty epic. Um, it's funny, The in World War II, the Japanese rifles had settings that were meant, these sights were very precisely constructed, were meant to actually be able to use their rifle to engage low-flying aircraft. It sounds bananas, and it was so comically ineffective that it was almost a waste of time and ammunition. Um, but they really believed, right, uh, doctrinally, that their individual uh, soldiers could engage aircraft, and if they did so en masse, they may actually be able to damage them. This isn't a hard drop, is it not? No, that's bullshit. Yeah, I've, I've had the tablets, they're really hard. You'll struggle to find stuff tablets. It's the, it's, really it's chewy. The, it's, it's the gooey, the, yeah. the gummy ecstasies <laughs> that you're after. That's... Well, I can't really weigh in on this because I would get demonetized. We're just going to move along. The ones you want. Yeah, but they're quite Moorish. What the fuck does that even mean, Moorish? It's where you kind of put a boat to harbour, but not quite. <laughs> He means mooring. Uh, mooring is when you tie your boat to a uh, dock. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. I'm just going to stay here and be a spawn point for a bit. Oh, God. Uh, whoever's throwing those grenades is stream sniping. Oh, it was Quebe Quebec you were stream sniping? <laughs> Quebec? We're on forgive. The forgive Quebec for team killing you. Never forgive, never forget, Soviet. Same team! What a dickhead. Right, that's going on the list. It's going on the list. It's going on the list. So, to Twitch, bad influence. How do you spell influence? Chat, how do you spell influence? Double. <laughs> that man also looks very disappointed and also very grizzled. But what's interesting is he's got this whole flamethrower backpack going on. You know it's bad when you're like 40 years old and you're just flaming just shooting flamethrowers at Vietnamese. U A N K. Thank you, Prome the Anok. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's supposed to be Promethean UK, isn't it? I am actually a retail. That's a good question, says Brown Sound. How does a blind man determine when he's done wiping? Taste test. The smell. Ah, <laughs> oh, gross. <laughs> no! Why? That's horrible! <laughs> no! It's like I'm dipping so your finger in a bit of chocolate. Oh, no, god. no, oh, shut the Jesus. fuck up. You know? Stop. Is that Digby all Disgusting. Oh my god. No, Digby's running away. I'm not you're, running away. You're running away. What is that then? I'm repositioning. You're running away. <laughs> uh, all the VC watching the stream, this is Digby. He's right here. Fuck off. Next to the tunnel for Bravo. <laughs> all Vietnamese people, please go to the B side river area. <laughs> fuck off, you massive bastard. Listen, if you need to be concealed, if the enemy knows your location and they have indirect fire or they're going to maneuver on you, then yes, you need to reposition. There is a difference between repositioning and running away. We've discussed this. Repositioning is maneuvering in order to continue the fight from a more advantageous direction, right? Uh, even... For example, the basic, the battle drill, one alpha squad attack. You have a support by fire that locks into place, engages the enemy, while the uh, a t a maneuver element, right, goes backwards ever so slightly so they don't cross in front of the machine gun team, right, and then flanks around. So it absolutely is just sense to get out. The other thing is a response to an ambush. If, if the enemy has chosen the time and place of the fight, then you do not want to sustain that fight with them, right? You don't want that. You want to fight them on your terms. And so the correct response is to launch massive firepower and GTFO. Okay, and now he's on the bridge. Hey! Oh. <laughs> Fuck you! Where's our beer? Where's our beer? You promised all of us beer. I'll make Ooh. you beer, he said. And we said, okay, you can join the clan because he's going to make us beer. And then so far, nothing. He keeps saying it's fermenting. What does that even mean? I need to get beer. Yeah, so do I. I could do with some beer. If only we knew somebody who ran a brewery. Quebec! I'll I mean, these these things take weeks and even months, especially if you want to age your beer in, say, uh, whiskey or sherry barrels, which really can make the beer much better. Um, 
But yeah, fermentation properly done takes a long time. I have a mead, a bottle of mead that is no kidding, five years old. It's been aging for five years. And I think it actually would be excellent now. Fuck. Digi is not provided the beer again. We're gonna have to take his tag. Yeah, we're gonna have to take away yours. That was the condition of getting them. Yeah, you're just gonna be a regular pleb in the team speak now. You're gonna have to remember passwords to read. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jesus. Oh, Can you imagine how funny it would be if it finally arrives and it tastes like shit? It's, it's <laughs> fucking awful. Someone in our, on our team, they have a Squad that we have beer. Uh, <laughs> oh, the <laughs> bastards! Wait, taste it, shit, probably. Alcohol. Yeah, no. <laughs> let's make it a yearly tradition. Did you need to make a new bottle? Yeah, right. I've got the beer. Design. Presentation is great. Labels. Shit Creek. <laughs> oh man, there's Soviet Wombo. There's. Oh my god, this is good. Are we opening? It? I've got the bottle opener. Again, <laughs> new design. <laughs> Oh man, since 2017. <laughs> That's pretty fun. Digital Vagrant, Palto, Sobiwamal, Tom, Bevan, Swat Knight, and Darius is a giant robot. This is great. This is truly oh, heartwarming. Will you quit whinging? No, I won't quit whinging. <laughs> well, are we waiting on someone to go and get it? Mine. Right, okay. We do this together. Me, right, guys. okay. You ready? Yeah. Yep. Three, two, one, drink. Uh, someone kick him, please. <laughs> oh, 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 my God. Oh, God. <laughs> Guys, that's actually pretty good. I really, really enjoyed that. Um, yeah. We've got napalm in 20 seconds. Oh, no, the right, next video is playing. You've seen this one already. All right, guys. Thanks so much for joining me for that. Um, if you want... First off, I have this dream of hitting 100k subs. Please hit subscribe. I really want that silver plaque. It's kind of my dream. Second, um... If you want access to exclusive content, including my Patreon-only Q&As, where I answer all sorts of questions, um, you want to become a, well, member of the Patreon. Thanks to our lieutenant-tier patrons, Cole Foster, Commandia, Caffeinated, Jacket Flavors, Chris Tucker, Shadow Cop, Porter World Time, Brandon Armageddon, Tell, Ren Astro, Runner, and Z1 Joker. Thank you, guys, and I will see you in the next one.